There's one more video that I want you guys to watch. Bear with me. Monarch Nation brings together a collective of partners across Canada engaging children in species at risk education. We've chosen the monarch butterfly to be our icon or ambassador species to represent all species at risk in Canada. Monarch Nation is providing opportunities for children to learn about species that are at risk in their local area and then to take action on their behalf. Actions might be planting habitat to support the species at risk or contributing to a citizen science program or it might be a letter writing campaign to to lend support for that particular species. Programming is happening in all sorts of different settings, sometimes in a beautiful forest like this, sometimes in a beautiful indoor setting like the Royal Ontario Museum. It doesn't matter where it is, the premise is still the same. We're still trying to connect kids with nature, to engage children in wildlife conservation and teach them something about the importance of protecting species at risk. Dang it. Oh, it was so close. It was so close on so many things. Um, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to episode, uh, welcome to episode 31 of the Conservation Cast. Um, Will sent me those two videos, not our Will, not William, but William, um, that video that we watched was created in partnership with his work. Hi, Courtney! Thank you so much. Um, the video of the, of the butterfly life cycle, um, was, was created in partnership with Will's work. So Will is an educator for the Toronto and Region Conservation, uh, in Ontario, Canada. That's where he's located. Um, he works with staff on the Monarch Nation projects, which is the video that we watched. Um, just then. So they help connect kids. Uh, I think their target audience is ages 6 to 12, so they know how to talk to children. It's going to be a good podcast. Will knows Will knows his stuff and, and how to interact with, with you guys. AKA Jay, thank you for the seven months. Um, like us, Pog. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but serious, in seriousness, they, they connect kids with, with wildlife and with conservation and um, with uh, species at risk. Um, by using hands-on education with monarch butterflies in particular is, is their ambassador for, for teaching kids about that. So, very cool stuff, very important stuff. Um, kind of similar to Dustin about how dinosaurs are like a gateway drug to science. Monarch butterflies are kind of similar because their life cycle is so interesting and you can see it up so close. Um, so I think that's part of it. And good news is we're going to be able to see it up close today. Um... Will has some live specimens today to show us, uh, so so we'll get to see those. He has a USB microscope, um, and so hopefully that'll work like it did on our test call. It's really really cool. So we'll we'll get to get up close and personal with um with some monarchs or caterpillars or whatever he's got right now. Um, your donations today are going to the David Suzuki Foundation. Um, specifically to their Butterfly Way project, which is a citizen-led movement growing highways of habitats for bees and butterflies across Canada. So the idea is they train um, Butterfly Way rangers, which are, are people that are trained and educated to protect butterflies, and then they engage in um, community service projects where they plant pollinator patches. They're in over 100 communities across the nation. They planted over 800 pollinator patches Cheer, thank you for the two months. Um, so they do really, really important things for um, for pollinators, um, specifically butterflies, bees, all pollinators. Um, but that's what the Butterfly Way Project does, and they're they're a partner with uh, with Monarch Nation. So that's where your donations will go today. There will be a quiz at the end of the podcast, as always. Um, Premise for the quiz is if you get the answers right and you do it really fast, then you win. And if you win, if you're not a sub to the channel, then you get gifted a sub to uh, my channel. If you are already a sub to the channel, then you get gifted a sub to somebody else's channel. Or you can donate an extra $5 to the podcast. Um, no, Kavras, wrong. Cinny, uh, thank you so much for the $5 to start off. 
Am I missing anything? I always feel like I'm missing stuff. It's so much to like to open and to get ready and to do for the podcast. I, just, I always feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, but I think we're good. Oh, do command org if uh, you want to be taken to Monarch Nation's website. Or no, I'm sorry. If you want to be taken to the David Suzuki uh, Foundation website and then also get more information on Butterfly Way project, the Butterfly Way project. Then you can do command guest if you want to be taken to Monarch Nation's Twitter account. Um, do hashtag ask if you have a question. So one of one of the best things about this podcast and one of the biggest um, biggest parts of it is that you guys can ask questions to the guest that's that's on, um, who's an expert in their species. So if you have questions about butterflies, about monarch butterflies, you can do hashtag ask and it will go into a doc um, that I'll see. And I'll ask him questions throughout the podcast. If you donate a question, that question will get priority over others, obviously. Um, and I won't be able to get to all the questions because there are always a lot of really good questions. But I will I will um, get to some of them, I'm sure. Content. Thank you for the $1. No worries at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And do thank you for the tier one. So we're going to go ahead and call Will. He's going to tell us more about uh, Monarch Nation, about their teacher network, um, about how they educate kids, about monarch butterflies, about the threats that they're facing. Um, monarch butterflies do face uh, quite a few threats to their populations. Um, climate change, habitat loss, you know, the, the, the typical ones that we talk about on this podcast, but I'm sure he'll tell us more about those and about uh, what we can do to educate ourselves about them. Um, and... Then he'll tell us, hopefully, about the Butterfly Way project a little bit more and um, what your donations are going to. So, that's the plan for today. And we'll get to meet some... Maybe not butterflies. I don't know if he has butterflies yet or if they're just caterpillars or eggs or what. But we'll get to meet some live things today. So, cool stuff. Okay. I will see you guys in a minute or two. I'm gonna call Will. all good i think so let's find out a testament does this work <laughs> yeah it looks good guys awesome so how's his volume you want me to turn him down you want me to turn him up what's going on up down left right which way are we going is that okay everybody hopefully that works it looks like we're good we're good to go cool awesome cool how are you I'm uh, I'm doing great today. Uh, super excited to be a part of this podcast. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you everybody uh, that's uh, watching today as well. Uh, I'm uh, from Ontario, Canada, and uh, we're talking a bit about monarchs today as well. And as mentioned, right, it's all going towards our uh, Butterfly Way project, a part of the David uh, Suzuki Foundation. So I'm excited to be a part of this. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to talk a bit about myself, Maya? Or please, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so uh, as mentioned, I'm an educator for the Toronto Region Conservation Authority. So I'm a teacher for them. And a big focus that we have as well is on monarch butterflies and doing education for students. Uh, from 6 to 12 is a lot of our focus, but we also do education for teachers as well. And that ranges uh, from actually teaching teachers how they can teach their students how to use and learn more about monarch butterflies and okay. also a process in rearing or raising them too. Very cool. So, lots of different things. Sounds like a great hands-on way to learn about it. Um, cloud tip three dollars. So we're at nine dollars so far. And oh my goodness! Thank, thank you, you guys. Um, can you tell us a little bit more in depth about uh, David Suzuki Foundation about the Butterfly Way Project? I have a very basic introduction on on what it is that they do. 
Yeah, so um, the Butterfly Way project is a big thing that's threatening monarchs, and that was kind of in your uh, opening uh, monologue there, was habitat loss, right? And we, mm -hmm. You've talked about it previously in regards to other species and even climate change too. And the big thing about this is restoring habitat uh, for monarchs, and monarch way stations are part of this. So planting native plants wherever it may be, uh, in gardens or in cities and towns, and municipalities and a big part of that is milkweed as monarch butterflies exclusively eat milkweed mm -hmm. so i always like to say it in this way is you know if you wake up every morning and have cheerios for breakfast that's the only thing you're allowed to eat for the rest of your life is cheerios and mm -hmm. not you know a bit of sugar you can't add anything else the only thing you're allowed to eat is cheerios yeah so that sounds that's a, a big part of uh, <laughs> what they put for. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big fan of Cheerios, though know, some people maybe are maybe love them, but you know, uh, not about that. Yeah. Um, Black Elon, thank you for the five dollars, the fourteen dollars. That's wonderful. Oh my goodness, um, thank you. We watched that that life cycle video that you sent. That was so cool. Um, I've no, I mean, I know generally like you know, there's a caterpillar, then there's a chrysalis, and then there's a butterfly, but I've I've never seen it. Um, so close. So that was really neat. Were you a part of filming for that? Or was it just done while you were working with Monarch Nation? Uh, I wasn't a part of filming that. Uh, it was actually somebody that we partnered up with. And they did it actually at a museum, uh, the ROM in Toronto. So just south of where I live. And it, uh, it's pretty me mesmerizing, I'd have to say, the whole process of uh, complete uh, uh, metamorphosis, right? From mm -hmm. And then how the actual uh, insect itself eats you know parts that it came out of uh, when it sheds its skin it eats right. that because there's a lot of healthy nutrients definitely saw some people in chat maybe a bit disgusted by that you know understandable <laughs> we're not eating oh, our you know, own dead emotes. yeah 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 a bit a bit about that right you so, watch but, twitch uh, uh yeah here and there here and there so yeah right. it's uh, it's it's good fun it's good fun i was gonna say because i was you guys didn't really say anything i just saw a bunch of what faces and dance games so i was like <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Um, okay, so how how did you get into monarch butterflies? What's your background? Yeah, so I've always been interested in insects to begin with. I went to school for outdoor recreation, parks and tourism, and then I wanted to be a teacher as well. And being outside, right, you always see insects, and we, we, we know and we've learned, right, like insects are everywhere, invertebrates, right? They're mm -hmm. the largest animals that we have or the most amount that we have everywhere. Right. Uh, when I started working for the TRCA, we had these projects, right, the Monarch Teacher Network, and then uh, Monarch Nation as well. And I really got fascinated all about monarchs themselves and how special and unique they are. So I kind of attached myself to them, I got involved as well here in Ontario in Canada, right, uh, monarchs are protected under the Endangered Species Act. Oh. So you do have to have a license to raise or rear them, mm -hmm. whereas in a lot of other places, but many people don't know that to begin with, too. Uh, but uh, in other places, you don't have to as well. So we do a lot of education on that. So I did my license, and then I raised them for educational purposes uh, where I live. And it's uh, something that I'm really passionate about. My cat likes it, too. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, a fun a fun uh, intermingling that we have. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Celeron, thank you for the $50. Cloud with oh $10. Goodness. Um, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, thank okay, you. so you said they're they're protected under the Endangered Species Act in Canada. Are they, so are they overall list, what's their conservation status overall? Or yeah, so they're, they're on the lowest of it. They're, they are a uh, species of special concern okay. uh, here in Ontario. So they don't fall into the same maybe category as some of the other animals that may or plants um, that may fall into it. But at any time, as we've noticed from the overwintering numbers uh, and over the last 20 years of data, monarchs are in a huge decline. So this could change at any time. The states is very different as well. There was a big petition a couple of years ago uh, trying to get monarchs, you know, recognized on this uh, kind of national level. And in December of 2020, that will actually be released if if they are recognized uh, kind of in this uh, facet as well, kind of what Canada has. Okay, so is their biggest threat habitat loss then? Because they're so specific on what they eat. Yeah, just, just habitat loss. Uh, one thing too about monarchs and eating milkweed, it is uh, a noxious plant. It, it is latex-based. So if you do have a latex allergy and you touch the the sap of it. I'm trying to really. Yeah, I didn't know that. It. Yeah, yeah. So you can uh, you can. This one, of course, is pretty dried out that I have here. I was just uh, using it to feed them. 
maybe it's probably not seen too well on the camera there, but I'll put it on the microscope later. And uh, so Aurora, you weren't you actually allowed to plant it at schools. You weren't allowed, you to, weren't allowed to plant it at schools and other places too because it was deemed as a noxious plant. Oh. Uh, but that changed in Ontario, still in eastern Canada, that you're not allowed to have it on maybe public property or something like that. So that habitat loss from our industrialization, right? Uh, and all our urban centers is a huge issue that uh, happens. That's interesting. I like that's an interesting case of habitat loss. Um, I I had no idea. Um, okay, let's look at some let's look at some viewer questions because there have already been a whole bunch of them. Um, LP asked, "How do you tell the difference between a male and a female butterfly, or can you?" Oh, I love this. So. Uh, you can't actually tell until they're in a chrysalis or as an adult. An adult's really the best way to tell the difference between a male and a female monarch. And it has to do with kind of two key indicators of their veins and uh, actually a spot that's on the backside of the monarch itself. So I have an old monarch uh, passed away last year, but I still have it. So this is a female. I'm not, I don't have a male one with me. But if you can see on here, the, the veins, so the black veins you can see here, mm -hmm. are very thick. Mm -hmm. On a male monarch, the difference is they're actually a lot thinner, these veins. Mm -hmm. And right where my finger is here, there would actually be a little spot. And there'd be a spot on the opposite side, too. And those are the big indicators how you can tell a male from a female uh, monarchs. So we're always really happy when we see... Uh, female monarchs, because those are the ones that are going to be laying eggs, right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of time in the animal kingdom, the males are kind of left behind. I always think of prey mantises and them chopping up the heads of males. Yeah, so. it's tough. Um, <laughs> it's SMK... tough in the insect world. <laughs> right. SMK then asks, so what's the significance of the color pattern? So is that um, for mating then? Primarily, uh, it has to do with really uh, telling other animals that, hey, I'm poisonous, right? I'm eating this plant, this milkweed plant, uh, and a lot of other butterflies uh, exhibit this too that may eat noxious plants. And it kind of says, hey, I'm poisonous. If you're going to eat me, you're going to be maybe sick. It's going to be really bitter. I'm not the most appetizing meal out there. Maybe go find something else. That's yeah. really the biggest thing for uh, the coloring of it. Of course, um, if, you know, there's a monarch that looks a lot better, that may attract a, a female for mating purposes. Okay. One thing about monarchs, too, they, uh, over time, especially females, after they've kind of come to the end of their life, they look pretty tattered and pretty worn out. And that's the good way to tell that they're on their last legs. Oh. Um, so, are monarch so LP asked, are there poisonous butterflies? Are they classified are there as poisonous? The, uh, monarchs themselves? Yeah. No, no. Okay. Uh, so, like, I'm, I'm not suggesting people to go eat monarchs, right? right. It's not it's, it's not something that you're going to eat. Uh -huh. um, but, <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, I know, yeah we're, we're not about eating them. <laughs> Love the education. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's questions, you know? We, we, get it, we get it all the time. Kids okay. always ask the darndest things, as I say. They ask I'm if kidding. you can eat them? Oh, kids ask if they can eat the weirdest things, I'll be honest with you. Anything in nature as well, everything's poisonous or poison ivy or, you know, is going to kill you. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's great. Okay. Get, it gets you a lot of laughs throughout the day. Yeah. Um, Aurora, I said it before, but thank you for the $25. Jack, thanks for the $2. We passed $100, so we're at 106 Oh my goodness, thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so SMK, this may be a good segue, asked, is it true that butterflies migrate during the winter? Let's talk a little bit about migration. Yeah, so this is a big thing about monarchs, right, where it intrigues so many people, and especially up here uh, in Canada, why it's really big, and, and throughout the States, is, is their migration of being one of the insects that travels uh, the furthest. So it's about 4,000 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles. I'll be honest mm. with you, I was not raised up on your system. Uh, that they'll travel from Canada all the way to like central Mexico. 2.5k uh, miles? Yeah, 2.5k yeah. miles. So a huge distance that this 4, small insect. Is it 400 4, kilometers? 4,000. 4,000. 4, okay, 4, so yeah, 2.5k. Yeah. Dang, that's so, a lot for a little butterfly. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's and it's not, it's once uh, kind of, uh, we could say, life cycle of monarchs as well. Um, and it's not every monarch, too. Not every monarch is migrating 
to Mexico. Some are, they're literally, their job is to reproduce and pass away. Hmm. Uh, unfortunate about that. And their life cycle is a lot shorter too, in regards to the stage of being an adult. But getting back to the migration, uh, they will, in August, September, uh, is when we actually start getting the super generation starting to be born. Mm -hmm. And then those monarchs, depending on temperature, depending on also daylight, that's a big trigger for them too. Temperature and daylight Mm -hmm. is when they will start flying uh, south is a big part of it. So then does climate change become a problem for them if, if temperature is part of what is like a signal for them? Yeah, so so this year, or sorry, I should say last year in 2019, it was pretty warm up until October. So it was a pretty late migration, and that's what they're attributing to some of the uh, decline in, in numbers for monarchs at, uh, in Mexico where they may roost uh. or you know hibernate over, uh, along with a lot of the droughts that were happening in south uh, south of the states as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the southern states, a big part of you know maybe their nectar that they're feeding on while they're traveling isn't there that food source right maybe is isn't available for them anymore so they may not make it to their final destination oh that's so sad um cloud tip four dollars said so i shouldn't eat the butterfly but it's made of butter um <laughs> that reminds me that's if you throw the butter out the window then it's a butterfly that's nice <laughs> okay um cloud also three dollars <laughs> uh 12 minutes ago tip three dollars said how do the flies get butter on them anonymous of twenty dollars oh thank you God. um 130 dollars okay <laughs> oh, wow so, <laughs> so my, my uh, terrible dad jokes my bad, my bad. no it was wonderful <laughs> <laughs> um okay botox asked what's the difference between a butterfly and a moth i bet you get this question all the time yeah, yeah. So butterflies and moths, right? A big thing is whenever we see one, we're always like, oh, it's a butterfly. And it, it's pretty hard to tell sometimes, right? If, if you notice the bright, vivid colors on a lot of butterflies, that's that's a great way to tell the difference, right? Uh, butterflies will usually have brighter colors, whereas moths are kind of more dull, mm-hmm. uh, more of a brown, right? Mm-hmm. And they're out at night or dusk, right? If we can think about it, they're more nocturnal, we can kind of say, whereas butterflies are out during the day. Uh, another good indicator of moss versus butterflies is actually their antenna mm-hmm. on moss. They're actually a bit furry or a bit hairy, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like mine. Whereas if <laughs> uh, our butterflies with their antenna, they're more bald okay. uh, and kind of just the antenna itself. Got it. Interesting. I think moths are so cute. I don't people. Some people are terrified of moths. Their faces, like up close, like some good images, they're adorable. Yeah, I, know. I guess it's just like the factor of them like appearing out of nowhere where it's dark and they can be massive is a bit frightening for some. I have had quite a few fly in my face, like at night. Yeah, um, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. It's not uh, not the most pleasant experience out of out of the blue. Okay, let's see. I'm going through a few questions. We've answered a lot of them. This is interesting. Isaiah asks, do monarchs have social structures like ants or bees? Uh, so actually monarchs are pretty, uh, they, they live most of their life, not never interacting with another monarch when they are caterpillars, right? The the female is just laying an egg on the underside of a leaf and they may not interact with another monarch until they're an adult. And when they're doing that is they're looking to do the deed or no reproduce. And that's one of the only times that they may actually socialize or interact with another monarch. And then after that happens, if uh, it's a female, she'll try to be laying uh, her eggs, so two to four hundred, uh, depending on the monarch itself. So they kind of live a very seldom life, you could say. Within rearing, though, they can, well, they do interact a bit more. Their eyesight isn't the greatest when they're caterpillars. It's a lot better when they're butterflies. And uh, you have to make sure you separate the little ones from the big ones, because the big ones sometimes don't see the little ones and can eat them. It's oh, not no. intentional. <laughs> But it's just, they're eating away on the leaf. How like, is that not you know, intentional? Like, they just don't know uh, that they're there. And then they just eat a little, little water. It's, oh my gosh. I, I, I have had it happen once because I didn't notice an egg. I feel terrible about it, right? It's it's a big part of making sure that uh, you have your very small monarchs in one area and your larger yeah. or your cat fives or cat threes in another. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, you, don't, you don't want a little cannibalism to happen. <laughs> Raptor with five dollars and eleven cents. Thank you. Um, okay, so we we just talked a little bit then about what caterpillars eat and what they eat. So Isaiah with fifty dollars. 
Oh my goodness, thank so, you, Isaiah. When I was a kid, there was a butterfly in my yard, but one day it flew away. I hope he's in Mexico. <laughs> I hope so, too. I hope it was a super generation, Mana, just for you. Okay, wait, so there was a question before that I meant to ask, and that's a good segue, and I have two segues going, but how okay. long, what's their lifespan? Yeah, so it. Uh, so I, I'm kind of alluding to what I was saying there as well, right? And uh, there's we kind of say there's two lifespans for monarchs. There is one monarch that uh, if these ones that I have in here, these ones as adults, they will only live for about two to three weeks. That's that's their lifespan as adults. Wow. And it will take uh, around I want to say up to a month if it's you know, the temperatures are a bit cold uh, for them to become adults. It's mm -hmm. usually about two weeks to become. Uh, the largest caterpillar, and then a chrysalis, it takes them two weeks to uh, emerge out of that to be an adult as mm -hmm. well. And then we're looking towards August and September is kind of when we get this super generation of monarchs. And these monarchs actually live up to six months, which is huge time comparison Whoa. compared to their other, uh, other companions or the generations before them. And those monarchs will fly all the way to Mexico. So it's always fun to say this, right? It's, you know, which monarch would you like to be, right? Of course, you know, every, I would say most people would want a longer life, right? Mm -hmm. Six months compared to two weeks is a pretty big difference um, yeah. between these monarchs. And it has to do with a whole bunch of things going on. They actually turn off their reproductive systems, these super generations. And they, they don't reproduce until the end of their wintering months in Mexico. And then they will, they turn on that reproductive system. And then the whole other cycle starts again. It's is that crazy. like, is that genetic? How is, how are those groups yeah, so, separated? Yeah, so there is a bit of difference between the two in regards to genetics. The super generation is just a bit larger uh, than the other ones, just because they have to also fly a bit, I'd say a lot further to mm -hmm. uh, in, in their migration. So they are genetically a bit different, but nothing uh, astronomical. It's inherited genes, and then they activate towards the end of the summer months when they need to migrate. Huh, that's so interesting. So, yeah, so these guys right here could become those super generation, but they won't be. It'll be their basically grand, grand, their grandkids. Huh. Not their kids, but their kids' kids. Cool. Um, Sadship three dollars said, "Did Will cry when Ash let Butterfree go?" <laughs> that many hands. Um, and then Conship twelve dollars and thirty seven cents. Thank you, Con. Appreciate that. I was always a big fan of Beedrill and Butterfree. Beedrill always looked a bit more menacing, personally, but you know, Butterfree yeah. was always that moment. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. Anyhow. <laughs> SMK with twenty dollars. Thank you so much. Oh, um, my goodness. Okay, so the other segue question that I was going to ask, because we were talking about the caterpillars eating each other, someone asked, what do butterflies eat? Yeah, so butterflies will eat nectar from the flowers themselves using their proboscis or their tongue, and that tongue is rolled up kind of like a, like a, like a straw, and they unravel it uh, when they are on a flower. It's pretty Ooh. cool. They actually taste with their toes as well, so if we are really? handling monarchs, yeah, and, uh, and we need to you know feed them, Right, so if we're feeding them, uh, we'll actually let them. If a bit of sugar water is what we uh, mix, and then we put their toes in it, let them taste it, and then if they don't unravel their proboscis, we may tempt them by using a paper clip uh, gently. So, huh. yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, but most of their food or basically stored energy comes from when they're a caterpillar. As mentioned in the video, their entire life as a caterpillar is just eating, yeah. defecating, shedding, and getting and then, to that part of being a, an adult. And eating what they shed. <laughs> yeah, and eating what they shed too, right? <laughs> right. Eating, eating their old self. Nice. They don't usually eat the little face mask that pops off, but uh, they, they they eat do. everything else. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got some bits. I'm... Confused on this question. They said, can you tell us about monarch butterflies self-medication via tropical versus swamp milkweed plants? Okay. Um, we say that one more time. Can you tell us about, about monarch butterflies self-medication via tropical versus swamp milkweed plants? It's okay if you don't uh, I have know, it. I don't know it. Yeah, I don't... I, I'm not too sure off the top of my head. I do know there are lots of different types of milkweed itself, right? We uh -huh. have 
we don't have tropical milkweed. Uh, we have butterfly milkweed, swamp milkweed, and common milkweed where I live, and I have all three in my garden here. Um, in the States, you can have tropical milkweed, which is part of it. I don't know about that question, though. Um, but if you're looking to plant it, I don't know. I don't know about the self-medication part. Okay, so speaking of... Part of that. So you have milkweed. The organization that you guys are donating to, X, thank you for the $5, Cloud with the $4. Um, part of the, the thing that they do is they plant pollinator patches. Is that the word for it? Um, yeah, pollinator patches, gardens, whatever yeah, you may so like. so planting pollinator-friendly plants. Uh, Viz asked, what can I do as an individual to somehow not interfere with the decline of the species? Or, better yet, to help the species. You want to talk about that? I will. I love it. So what we say is for you as an individual, right, is to plant milkweed. That's the biggest thing. Cool. And uh, be educated in it, too. And uh, planting milkweed is the biggest way that we can help monarchs restore their habitat and uh, hopefully uh, prosper in, in later in life. Now, milkweed itself, right, we have swamp milkweed, common milkweed. Those are kind of the, the most common in regards to monarchs and what they would eat uh, is you know, if you have a garden at your house, planting either one of the two, I, I always suggest if you have a very, um, if you have a bit of a garden that you tend to and want to control, plant swamp milkweed, as it doesn't have as aggressive of a root structure or rhizome structure, whereas mm -hmm. common milkweed, you would plant one plant, and you're probably going to have maybe 20 next nice. year, <laughs> and then you might have 40 next year, and then also your neighbor's property might have 10. Uh, and right. it, it gets pretty crazy. I planted two, and I think I have ten, and some are on my neighbor's property. So I have a lot of swamp milkweed as well, because it control. It's a bit more controlled. Yeah. Uh, we all like that a bit of control in our life. <laughs> and but yeah, that's the biggest thing. And if you don't have these properties, maybe you're an apartment. Uh, you can always plant it in like your own little balcony garden. So if you have a railing, whatever it may be, you can always grow milkweed in a plant pot and there have been situations where monarchs have visited balcony gardens and laying eggs on them too so there cool. there are opportunities for everyone uh wherever they may live if you take the steps in growing your own milkweed and providing that food or that habitat to monarchs uh, and the biggest way through that is in helping them reiterate is just by planting milkweed that seems easy enough that's awesome yeah. um mike tip 499 said, hi, Will. I'm a landscape architect student from Manitoba. I don't know where that is. And I appreciate Petra all your... province. <laughs> okay. I appreciate all your efforts promoting promoting monarchs. We've been researching building milkweed parks on the rural prairies. Hi. My question is, have you been to Sanctuario Mariposa in Mexico? No, I haven't. Uh, it's It's always been something that I've wanted to do in regards to when I've been a part of this monarch team within my work. Uh, of course, with ongoing situations around the world within COVID-19 and everything mm -hmm. uh, kind of getting turned on its head, 2020 has been pretty disastrous. Uh, you know, it, that will come in the future. I hope to go there while uh, tourism is still somewhat of a thing. And if not, just being able to explore a bit of the area, too. Uh, it's it's on my bucket list, that's for sure. It's just if I get to uh, try out that bucket at some point. Cool. So, um, Milky, thank you for the five extra bits he said. That question from earlier about, like, self-medication, he said, mm -hmm. to clarify my question, there's ongoing research that has found that monarchs selectively oviposate on milkweed high in cardinaloids, possibly due to their medical benefit. I oh, so... I pronounce that wrong. Also. Yeah, um, so basically we're talking a bit about female monarchs uh, depositing their eggs on specific milkweed. Uh, tropical milkweed compared to swamp milkweed. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thought processes behind that is around something called OE, which is a disease or something that threatens monarchs. I believe this is the right article. I think I might have heard about this in some forums. And uh, tropical milkweed, I believe, has less chance of getting this OE or this par parasite disease on it compared mm -hmm. to regular milkweed. Okay. So, if I think that's in the right realm of it, hopefully that answers it. In in regards to that, I don't know too much uh, about that. Uh, it's very uh, early on research. It's similar to the research that are saying rearing is uh, having uh, impacts or people raising monarchs. Those monarchs are having less chance of migrating too. So there's a lot more research that's coming out uh, every day and every year. So hopefully we can get more about that too. 
Because there are, there are some diseases out there that definitely have a big impact on monarchs. Okay. Good question. Sorry, I had a hard time understanding it, but thank you. All good. Appreciate that. Um, okay, we'll do a couple more questions, and then I want to get into your microscope, because I'm super excited about it. Um, yeah, for sure. Let's see. We've talked about threats a little bit. We've talked about... Okay, well, Max asked, what's the butter? What's the butterfly's main role in the ecosystem, and do all types of butterflies have a different job? Yeah, so butterflies, uh, we can say one of their main parts, right, is for pollination, right? So they're a big mm. pollinator as well, uh, going from flower to flower, helping our plants, right, in regards to that. And then also their food, too, right? Of course, you know, there may be, uh, it's trying to deter some animals saying, hey, I'm poisonous, don't eat me, right? Mm. Uh, there may be an animal, hopefully not a human, especially one that's in chat, is going to eat a monarch. <laughs> but there may be animals that still eat this, right? If we think about um coffee for example kills many insects but to us right it's technically a drug um, yeah so so yeah the, their purpose pollination and also food okay for Great. others um okay do, 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 do. content i don't know if you know the answer to this question everybody always mm -hmm. asks these um content oh it's the same guy asked how fast are they <laughs> Do you know how, how fast, fast they are they fly? in regards to speed? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think it's about 10 to 15 kilometers. If you have ever seen a monarch and once if, if, if you yes. are more interested in it, um, 15 kilometers, what is that? Like six miles? Like that. I don't know. It, yeah. Close. Hang on. I'm going to look. It's usually it's like what? Half of 10 is 6.2 miles per hour. That's really fast. That's faster than I thought. <laughs> Yeah, the, a big thing about them, and, and once you start to see them more and you say, oh, okay, that's a monarch, they're during the day. You, you, I can notice them when I'm driving uh, my car around. I can say, oh, look at that in the sky, right? I definitely know it's not a bird. Uh, you know more about birds than I could ever know about <laughs> birds. Um, but uh, I know it's not a bird from my general knowledge, and it's definitely not a moth because it's middle of the day. It's probably a monarch butterfly. I can see the color. Mm -hmm. And... It is, you know, it's a pretty big insect, right, that's flying around there. And they kind of go with the wind. They kind of just fly around and uh, go where they go, right, yeah. with the wind. Um, but it's pretty amazing to see them out and about. Last year was an amazing year for monarchs. It was tough not finding them. Uh, it actually became a bit of an issue, uh, finding too many of them when I was trying to look for food for some of the ones I was raising. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're uh, pretty, pretty majestic. Wow, cool. Um, okay, and another, it's from the same content. You're asking a bunch of good questions. I feel bad I'm not answering others, but I also kind of want to know. Um, okay, we'll do two more because this one's also content's question. He said, can butterflies smell? Can they smell? Yeah. Uh, I, they, so, yes, and in regards to uh, them tasting with their toes, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of their main way of going about it. Okay. Um, and then... Mystic asked, are monarchs only native to North America? So they are mainly native to North America. There have been sightings. They, they've been in Hawaii. They are on the West Coast as well. They do have two kind of uh, main, uh, I guess I could say, hibernation spots on mm -hmm. the West Coast of the States. Uh, I have it written down. I'm forgetting uh, the name of it exactly. Because we mostly, because it's only about 5% of their population. Uh, that actually hibernates there uh, compared to Mexico, where it's 90%, 95 percent of the population. There is some also in South Florida, but not not as many as uh, Mexico too. Okay. So mainly North America, they have been spotted, um, but you know towards Hawaii, but not as many, not as abundant. Okay, cool. Um, slime to thirty three dollars and thirty three cents said, worked at a nature center years ago where we had an August Monarch educational program. Good to hear similar information over Twitch so that more people can learn, care, and take positive action. What a lovely donation. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, and uh, that's like one of the things that we're trying to do too on August 22nd. It's called Flight of the Monarchs. We're trying to have this big national day in Canada. And you know, by all means, like we're trying to extend the hand to you guys as well in the States and wherever else people may be uh, to kind of join us on this day. We're going to send out educational pieces so if you have a family they can do that together there might be a bit of competition i don't know exactly Ooh. i'm doing 
some Facebook lives with my work around monarchs. I'm yes. doing one in June something. I do some funny educational. Uh, I think they're quite funny. And I laugh <laughs> my own yeah. and uh, uh, videos too. So, but yeah. So there's August twenty second. We're trying to have this big day, and we'd release a whole bunch that maybe we're rearing and also tagging. Uh, is a bit of a what we do too to see if they get ID'd uh, further south in Mexico, so how, wherever they may like. How do you do tagging? Because they're so little. What do you? What yeah, does it so, look like? So how it works? I'm not going to bend this one just because it probably will break. Um, you have to be very careful with them. So when they're adults, hang on, I have some props here with me today. Uh, when they're adults, I put them in this. This is an old flight cage. There's actually still like old chrysalises in it on, in me... here. So it's made of. Let me Tools. full screen you so they okay. can see better. Um, we'll move them here. Do, 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 like this, and Yo, then like this. I don't want to stand up. Like... I'm like too tall for this. There we go. Okay, we'll do this. All right. There I have my go. big question mark. Come on. I love sure. that. It's so cool. Yeah, so when they're adults, we put them in this flight cage. Uh, and we've actually maybe put chrysalises in here too. Uh -huh. uh, and you can actually see that part here. I would tie it just with uh, some... Uh, what, what's the stuff? Floss, dental floss. That's okay. what you call it. I don't know what the tea <laughs> stuff is called. But yeah, dental floss. And then they would emerge inside of this flight cage. Uh -huh. And then if I'm going to tag them, if I believe uh, that it's late enough in the year, I would actually tag them. It's just a little sticker. And you actually put it on their wings. You put it close to their thorax. If I can put here, there's a little mitt. This one's not the greatest. You actually hold them very gently. And if you hold them, you hold all of their wings nice and close that this is to be folded up. Mm -hmm. You can hold them. They kind of like move their legs a whole bunch as well. Mm -hmm. And then you take a pin and you just kind of put it right on their back. Uh, there were other ways before. They actually put a sticker on both sides to try to secure it. But that was a bit more damaging to them. And this is a way that hopefully less scales come off. And each one has a like serial number as well. And you register that. Jeez. And if someone finds it, they would report back and say, hey, we found this monarch here. And on, on the little sticker, it says, if you find this butterfly, please do X, Y, Z with it. Yeah. So people wow. can, yeah. So it's, pre it's pretty sweet. It's a, uh, uh, for me, tagging, I, I like the educational piece. I will do the tagging. There are some amazing people that I work with that are better at the tagging and are more comfortable. I always get a bit, you know, when they start moving their legs, they like holding on to something. Mm -hmm. It's uh, always a bit different too. So I'd always try not to freak out. Be yeah. like, I'm sorry, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> tag quickly. Courtney said scales, that's cool. When you say less scales fall off, what do you mean by that? So yeah, so uh, monarchs, they have scales, right, all over their wings like that. They are an insect, and uh, when we put on the sticker itself, uh -huh. we may be brushing off scales during that time. Huh. Um, and then another thing, too, is if they are handled at any time, even if I'm grabbing them, scales are coming off. Uh, I can show that under the microscope, and yeah. you can hopefully see some of the scales. And that I have uh, some great. other butterfly wings, too, and kind of see the different colors. Uh, but when you know the monarch gets older, the scales help them fly or you know help they're kind of like a, a rain jacket, right? They protect the monarch. And if enough fall off, you know, it may have the inability to fly or you know, get harmed. So, yeah, because I've never thought of, I've never thought of scales, but I guess I just haven't looked close enough. So shall we? Can we? Can we use yeah, the yeah. microscope um, and get a closer look? Let me look? know if this works. Okay. We'll, uh, I'll try to get this going. I guess we'll, just because we're talking about the monarch itself, mm -hmm. uh, we'll look at that and then we'll look at uh, another... Uh, one here. Where is this one? This one's pretty cool, too. Okay. Well, I think they're all cool, but this one's maybe a bit more cool. Okay. All perspective-based anyways. Okay, here we go. Video. Okay, so let me know if that has changed. Yes, it has. Uh, just for example, everybody, I have just a piece of milkweed here. I'm just going to go to the back of it. Give me a second to focus. Oh my gosh. You can see all of the hairs on the milkweed. So, That's for so example... Cool. This here, all these hairs, this is one way to tell milkweed, it's a pretty furry plant. Uh -huh. You would actually, when they emerge in that video that we saw, right out of the egg, they eat their egg, right? You gotta, uh -huh. can't, you gotta reuse all your stuff. They'd actually start eating these hairs before they start eating the plant itself. They don't want to be overwhelmed by all of the sap. 
that mm -hmm. could actually potentially kill them. So we'll go over to the Monarch, and I just got to focus it, so give me a second. This one's a bit st stuck, so I apologize for everybody and what they're seeing. No, you're fine. Whoa, whoa, it's like... So, hopefully you can see all the individual scales there. I had no idea. <laughs> the, guys, it's like... Good pixels. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of uh, pixels within a camera, something yeah, like that, right? Yeah, it does. So it, it's, it's very similar in regards to that. And I always find it a phenomenon and, and, and wonderful about, you know, these insects, right? It's, you know, we're, we're somewhat smart human beings, right? But, you know, this, this little animal is able to travel so far and, you know, the scales on its back help it so much too. And they can be such vibrant colors too. So I'll go to another part on its back, kind of try to get a oh, different that's angle. that's so cool. Yeah, wow. so it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, like little pixel art. Yeah, so cool. I always am so fascinated. So here is another one. This is a different butterfly. Oh my gosh! It looks like a fish. What the heck? They really yeah. are scales. I I just yeah. Like, did anybody know that butterflies had scales? Am I dumb? I like I never thought no, about it. Like, okay, it's okay. It's a common misconception. Yeah, they 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 do have scales. Yeah, so. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. Now, what color? This is a test for you. What color do you see, or what color do you think this is? What color do you think this butterfly wing is? It looks blue to me, or like blue, blue green, yeah. Blue green. Okay. Everyone's yeah. saying yeah. teal. Purple. Teal. It's getting very specific. What's it? Magenta. Is that like a, kind of another blue? <laughs> so, like so the butterfly wing on this one is actually not blue. So it's how light is being refracted and perceived to be blue. So it's on a microscopic level, that is what is happening here. So same thing with like a, um, what's it called? A, a blue jay, same way. It's not actually uh -huh. blue. It's just kind of, you know, what is being perceived. So it's like pretty cool uh, what we have here. Um, what, what color is it? Uh, like well, it'd be kind of more of a gray, oh. I guess. And the other side, so we can see this blue here. I'll flip it over. Uh -huh. Huh. And, oh, hang on. Did that work? Yeah. There we go. I don't think it's too focused. Give oh my gosh, oh, the yeah. like the little ripple in between and how the scales are coming up. It's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a like gold blue dress. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, pretty uh pretty cool. This one's kinda of moving along now. Yeah. So pretty neat. Um I, I always love looking are people okay with a bit of like kind of gross, gory, kind of cool things? Sure, do you think? Um, uh, legendary, thank you for the ten dollars survivor with the three months. Danny with the eighteen thirty five. He said this microscope is oh so cool. It is. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty sweet. I love using it as an educational tool for kids, just because you know we get to look at anything up close, right? Yeah. Um, and it's awesome. So. The monarch I've been showing you doesn't have a head because it fell off, but I think it's pretty cool just to check it out yeah. up close. Hopefully the lighting is okay. Uh, and hopefully we can see its proboscis or its tongue all rolled up. Oh my gosh. If I can get it there. There you go. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what are we looking Do at I, here? I see... This is the monarch butterfly's face. Okay. Yeah. So it's the pretty... The one it's, eye... I can I I understand the left eye are, like. Am I looking at it right? Yeah, so you can see oh, both the eyes tongue. in the picture. Yeah, that's the tongue. Oh my gosh! I that's I'm so tongue. I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought no, that was no, like the eye, up. but that's what it looks yeah, like curled up. I see. Okay. Yeah. So so when they first emerge from their chrysalis, it's actually in two separate pieces. So a lot of the time, they're pumping the fluids uh, from their abdomen out into their wings. They kind of look all shrivel up and disheveled. And then after a couple, uh, maybe hours or minutes, they actually look fine. And during this time, they're also unraveling their tongue and then reeling it back in. And they're actually kind of stitching it together. So you can kind of see a line there, if I can get the image just there, in the center of it. Uh, and then, yeah, it, uh, it kind of becomes one straw for them. It's kind of cool. I'll move it away because people are probably saying, what is going on here? <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, I have. Uh, we're gonna see a little friend here. This guy emerged yesterday. I'm just gonna switch back to my camera quick, okay? So I can find uh, them and kind of make them a bit more presentable, and then uh, we can look at this. So this is a monarch I found. When it, what day is it today? It's Friday. Friday. Day yeah. that ends in Y. And um, so I found this on Tuesday. I think I emailed Maya, and I was super excited. To I was like, oh, I found a monarch. 
work. Yeah. And uh, I was super stoked about it as we only started getting monarchs to northern uh, North America or northern Canada or southern Canada. Uh, I don't know how to use my words today, but uh, in Ontario here, and there were sightings of monarchs. So I went out to a local park in my area. Uh, some people were wondering why this tall individual was looking in the bushes for plants, milkweed specifically for monarch eggs. People find it really weird when like a tall random person is just like foraging in the woods, <laughs> basically. Um, that makes sense. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. So here we go. We have our little friend here. I actually had a video of them emerging. Here we go. I think we're changed over. I just have to make sure I can see it. Just so we're focused. Apologies, everybody. And ready here. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wow. So this so he's only about he's a couple of day old. So that's why we don't see any of the colors on our little friend here. So after about three days, he'll go through that shedding. He'll eat his own skin, and then he will actually start. We'll call him a second instar. And uh, we, we call it instars because they'll shed their skin about five times. And that's a way to tell us kind of how old they are, too. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah, so we can see our little friend here, right? Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cute. So he's just kind of hanging out, eating the furs of the plants as well. So, yeah, they'll, he'll keep on eating and eating. Uh, until, you know, 20 days from now, and then he'll be a chrysalis. So how long until his first molt, then? So molt, first molt will probably happen, I would guess, maybe tomorrow. Oh, uh, that's so uh, fast. All, wow. Yeah, it is. They grow up so quick. It's, uh, you know, you feel like a parent, or what my parents always say, you grow up so quick. Uh, and then, you know, the next thing you know, they're chrysalises. Next thing you know, you're letting them go and into the wild, and they're being free. Yeah. So, they're they're pretty adorable here. So for for perspective, if human babies, right, they're they're pretty small, fragile things. Uh -huh. If human babies grew the same rate or size as monarch caterpillars, they would mm -hmm. actually be the size of a bus when they're an adult. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So That's imagine crazy. if you have a baby brother or sister, or you you remember they'd be the size of a bus, and then they'd be like, okay, I'm an adult now. Yeah. So everyone here is the size of a bus. All right, chat. You're huge. That's big. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I will, uh, if I can find this egg quick, I'll show you guys what an egg looks like, uh, as they're pretty interesting too. And this one has not hatched yet. Were you guys here, for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of, we saw, we saw an egg in that intro video that we watched, right? And then it ate it. Remember that? At, like the very, very it's start. Fine. It's hiding on one of these leaves here. When they're this small, oh, there it is. It's very hard to see uh, or find them. Oh, yeah. But a big thing is, too, is for IDing the eggs themselves is, oh, there it goes. Um, there a lot go. of people get sap mixed up with the egg. A uh -huh. big way, once you become more familiar, you actually start to see, you can see the ridges in it, right? You can see that it's not completely smooth. Yeah. Um, underside of leaves usually a bit ridged, ridged as well. And yeah. before it hatches, you'll actually get a black top on it. So the top of it will be a black cap, and that's kind of our caterpillar's face or head. And then he'll eat his way out. Or kind of use his little chompers, eat the egg, and then emerge. That's now, so of cool. course, this egg may not emerge, um, as not all living things or not all eggs uh, fully develop, right? So if this one doesn't develop, I would say by Sunday. Um, I might just kind of put it off to the side, and it uh, it did not survive. What what happened exactly? I I wouldn't know because just sometimes they just don't happen. Isaiah, thank you for the ten dollars. Um, how many eggs do they typically lay? I'm not sure if you said that already. Uh, they lay about two to four hundred. They okay. can lay a lot more, uh, depending on the male or sorry, female, I should say. And depending on, a lot of it is temperature dependent too, right? Because if it's a really cold day, uh, they're not going to be very active. They may not be laying. They can lay up to their body weight though, the females. It's pretty uh, pretty amazing too. Okay. Um, somebody asked a question uh, earlier. Of how many of those make it to adulthood out of the two to 400? Yeah, so out of the two to 400, only about 3% if they are in the wild, will make it to adulthood. Wow. Uh, and then 
depending if they're not predated or eaten by others. Uh, it's a very small margin of monarchs that survive. So it's it's tough out there in the animal kingdom. Yeah. As I as I always say, it's not it's not all glory and beautifulness. It's it's a lot of I eat you. Hopefully, you run away from me. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. Blade just asked in chat, "What is the Butterfly Way project?" So if there are, if there are new people here, would you mind uh, one more time going over where their donations are are headed? Yeah, so the Butterfly Way project is uh, in part with the, the David Suzuki Foundation, and it is creating habitat for monarchs. And the big thing about that, we talked about the biggest threat for monarchs is habitat loss. Monarchs only eat one type of food, milkweed. Uh, there's various types of milkweeds out there, but the big thing is is creating spaces for them to eat that food, wherever it may be. So if it's in people's backyards, creating these way stations, maybe if it's in community gardens, public spaces... Uh, really outreaching and uh, creating these habitats for this really cute uh, and you know vibrant insect out there. So. Yeah, awesome. Um, Connor tip three dollars. Thank you. Uh, said sorry if this has already been answered, but what do butterflies do environmentally in the same sense that bees pollinate plants? Yeah, so similar in regard to that, pollination is one of the big things, and also. Uh, being a part of our whole food web of being uh, eaten. So big thing is pollination is kind of one of our main ones. And then being food for others. Kind of if we think back to that stat, right, of, you know, only a couple percent of our monarchs live, you know, they may be eaten by maybe ants or eating our small little friend that we saw there or taking him away. Mm -hmm. uh, or it may be uh, earwigs or other spiders or something like that, too. Okay. Yes. Or even parasites as well. So. All right. Yeah. Um, chat, so many questions, um, all under like similar categories. I think we hit a lot of really good bases here, um, about their life cycle and about, uh, migration, about the threats that they face, about what you can do to help. Um, I appreciate all of your questions. I appreciate all of your donations. Uh, Will, is there anything yeah, else that you, that you want to talk about? Cause we're, we're hitting, um, 3 PM here. Um, anything that I want to talk about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just, uh, our, uh, Monarch Nation. So monarchnation.ca, as I mentioned previously in our, in our great discussion, and thank you for all the wonderful questions, everybody, and all the donations that have come through. It's, uh, it's been a real pleasure to be a part of this, uh, this, uh, th this talk. So, and, uh, get to answer questions. Yeah. Monarchnation.ca, August 22nd, we're doing, uh, a kind of big culminating activity around Monarchs and kind of making them nationwide this kind of little day of you know, cherishing this insect. And, you know, if, even if you're in the States or wherever you may be located, uh, if you wanted to join in, by all means, uh, you could be a part of it too. Uh, yeah, so kind of, uh, I guess that's my little spiel about that for, uh, for something. Bomb, yeah, thank no, you it's, for uh, the, awesome. Bomb, thank you for the $10. You guys can do command guess, um, and that'll take you to Monarch Nation's Twitter. I'm sure that you can find more information about the 22nd. Uh, through your Twitter, I guess you guys will probably be updating um, via that social. Yeah, hopefully. Warren, thank you for the ten dollars. You can also find them on Facebook. Will goes live on Facebook. They're wonderful. I watched a couple of the re the recorded ones. Oh goodness uh, me! No, they were wonderful. <laughs> they're, they're pretty raw. I'll be honest with you. It's it's me in my backyard, and and uh, they give me the the the, the freedom of liberty, I guess. And I uh, tried using Streamlabs. I, I guess it's a you know popular thing, and. Um, yeah, they were all wondering if I got approval for it. But I didn't. But you know what? We'll, we'll get that later at some point. So, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, in due time, we'll get that. But uh, Wait, you're we using, have fun. Can you use Streamlabs for Facebook? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I yeah, you just do this. I don't know. It's some connect thing. And then I guess it's like the same as, as Twitch, right? You put it in and yeah. directly connect it. So, so yeah, oh. you can... You can do it on Facebook. Like I personally didn't know. I usually oh, was just doing it on my phone, and it was pretty scuffed, but uh, yeah. <laughs> we make it work. Got it. Um, Warren, I think I already said thanks for the $10. Blade with $3. Um, I appreciate that, Blade. And CS, C Sore, I don't know how to say anything. I'm sorry, to $50. Um, wow, which thank is you. Big. $387.49. Okay, you said scuffed. I have to ask who do you watch on Twitch? What do you watch? Who do I watch on Twitch? Yeah. Uh, I, I watch a couple people. I guess I, I, I watch some like Twitch drama stuff. Just I don't know oh, why. No. 
I know it's terrible. It's like terrible. What? I don't think you've ever been on it, more or less. But uh, um, there, there, are, it's just like interesting, like the whole like streaming world. Yeah. I find it. Uh, I, I have watched Ms. Kiff before. Okay, good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, so you, he, are you he's, like, you know, he's freak. Do you like LSF stuff, LSF drama? Uh, no, like, there's like the highlight recap LSF oh, okay, drama. Okay, it's okay. just like what is kind of happening in the online world. I love keeping up to it just because if I ever go to a school too, if I can relate to anything that they, they relate to, right? Uh, if it's yeah. you know, big, big streamers, um, I'm trying to think like if it's... Uh, uh, like Pokemon or something like that, or if mm -hmm. it's like, you know, conservation stuff, even like yourself, right? It's like, hey, you know, there's like other things too, other than all this like ridiculous stuff uh, out there too. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's also like wholesome channels that are that are out there that, you know, are, are you know, spreading word about environmental stuff. Yeah. So. Cool. Anonymous yeah. with $5. And all this chess happening. I don't oh, know. Oh, so much chess. So <laughs> many deer. <laughs> Um, anonymous with five dollars. Anonymous with five dollars. Sweaty tripod with fifty dollars. Zoya with three dollars. Glyph with twenty. Holy cow! Okay, so wow. coming in really fast now. Yeah. Warren with fifty three dollars said thanks, William and Maya. They're really trying to get us to our five hundred dollar goal here, and we hit it. So we're at five hundred and twenty three. Wow! Wow! Um, Thank you. Dollars and forty nine cents. Richard, Guys, That's thank amazing. you so much. Um, I appreciate that. Cool. Um, it's got me wet in here. Okay. It's cold in here. No, it's pretty warm. <laughs> it's hot here, always. I'm in Texas. I, I don't know if you know that or not. Oh, my. Um, Texas. That's so warm. Yeah, it's it's hot and humid. Um, Will, thank you so much for, for coming on today, chat. Thank you for your questions, and thank you for your donations. Um, I, I really appreciate it. And thank you for that microscope experience. That was so sick. I think that yeah, yeah. Up. You should get one. Show your stream, right? And you I can actually, well, I don't know utilize it in some ways. I gotta get into like, I just got this little scuffed like macro lens that's just a rubber band with, um, like it's almost like a like it looks like a raindrop. <laughs> so it like just, goes onto your phone. Yeah, you just strap it around your phone. Um, I got that for my IRLs. I want to start looking at insects and stuff a little closer. So yeah, we'll see. they're Maybe so I'll cool. Start, I'll start bringing some friends home and. We'll see. But that was really yeah, cool. No. We learned a lot today. Thank you. Awesome. That's great to hear. All right. Well, I will be in touch soon. We raised $523.49, but the stream's not quite over, so I'll let you know the final um, total oh. once I once I get offline. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and enjoy. Follow us on our social media. Um, come and join my Facebook Lives if you want some, I don't know, educational stuff where i yeah. talk in my work attire um but yeah and uh i might do i'm moving a whole i think six beehives tomorrow so yeah i might do that we'll see cool all right well be awesome. careful yeah it'll be fun <laughs> good luck all right i'll talk to you soon thank you much everybody enjoy maya thanks right. for having me again bye bye everybody All right, chat. Um, Flick with $10 for Bugs Life. Botox with $3.51. Thank you, Botox. What a nice man. Actually, what a nice man. That was our first drama frog guest. Oh, the butterfly. So nice. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, he's great. That microscope thing was so sick. I did not know that butterflies had scales and it's still really like messing with my head and I just want to look at all insects under a microscope now. You know what I mean? Like, wow, that was so cool. Um, okay. So lots of podcast questions. We have quiz questions. Um, and I typed all of them throughout the pod. I'm getting better at doing them while I'm doing the podcast without losing my train of thought. Um, Again, guys, thank you so much for for your donations. It's I, like I can't believe that we raise this much every week. Where what will what's the total right now? Gimli with $50 and a big bowl of soup with $25. Said let's go butterflies. So nice, so wholesome. Over 33k for the podcast, but for my channel over, let's focus on that. Over 33k for the podcast itself. Um, and this is episode, what, 31? 
I can't believe that we do this every week. It's amazing. And if you're not donating, again, there is almost 2k people here. That's so brilliant. That's so cool. And I think the vast majority of us learned today that butterflies had scales. And I can confidently say that I'm never going to look at a butterfly the same way. Or I'm going to appreciate butterflies much more after learning about this. And I think that that is the goal of Monarch Nation. I think that's Will's goal as an educator, and I think that that is a value that um, Butterfly Way Project holds a very, very close. So your donations going to that and contributing to more kids. Again, the kids that Monarch Nation teaches are ages 6 to 12, so um, donating to that and having having more kids and more people like you guys learn those things and, and gain more respect for, for these animals and insects Um the more people that care, the more that can be done about it, and the less threats, hopefully, that they'll face in the future. So it's really, really powerful. It's really, really special. Um, and and I appreciate you guys for being here so much. Um, Twitch is such an untapped reservoir for doing good. Um, in total, we're at just over 85k for my channel. For... Causes across the board, 33k for the podcast. Guys, that's, that's nuts. That is, like, disgusting. That's so crazy. Ah, wild. Okay. Um. All right. Are you ready for a quiz? People Pog gave a lot to other causes this week. This is all I can afford. I really, really appreciate that. Um. I totally understand. I There's a lot going on in our world right now. Um, but good on you for, for donating to other causes. Thank you. So. I am going to write up this quiz. It's going to take a couple seconds. The deal for the quiz is it's five questions. You get 20 seconds per question. Um, the person that gets it Correct, the fastest gets the most points, and then at the end of the five questions, those points are all added up. Um, the person who gets the the most right, the fastest, wins the quiz. If you're not a sub to my channel, I will gift you a sub to my channel. If you are a sub, I will gift you a sub to a channel of your choice, or... Thank you so much. Will with the $20 donation. He is, I really do think, he's one of you, chat. He knows. <laughs> will knows. Um, thank you. $634, there's your total, uh, thus far. If you win the quiz and you are already a sub to my channel, I will either gift you a sub to a channel of your choice, or I will donate an extra $5 to the Butterfly Way Project, okay? Um, give me a couple minutes to do the quiz to get it set up. You have to, you have to manage access, click enable access. Viz is linking an imager. Is that how you say that? I think it is. Okay, Viz and Viz, you guys got to stop doing this to me every week. Uh, it gets me every single time. You have to stop. <laughs> it's like, at this point, it's like a classic. But it's got to stop. Okay, so Viz is linking an imager to it. Um, so you can see what that looks like here. You have to grant access so that I know what your name is, okay? Otherwise, it'll just say contestant number blah blah blah, and I won't you won't be able to win the quiz. So so make sure you do that because every time we have people that don't. Um, give me a couple minutes. I'm going to create the quiz and then I'll be back, okay? Two minutes. Here we go.
All right. Here we go. Are you ready? Five questions. 20 seconds a question. No. <laughs> this one, I don't think this one is going to be too difficult, if that makes you feel any better. Starting quiz. Ask viewers to manage access by clicking the quiz kit icon. Guys, please manage access by clicking the quiz kit icon. Here we go. What is one threat that monarch butterflies face? Is the threat microplastics? Is it entanglement? Is it habitat loss? Or is it that chat eats them? Kind of weird chat. The correct answer <laughs> is habitat loss, except for Chuck does eat them. 255 of you got that correct. Who's in the lead though? Who got it right the fastest? Yo, Ms. Kiff, congratulations. Next question. What plant do monarchs exclusively feed and lay their eggs on? Is it sunflowers? Is it Bermuda grass? Is it pickleweed? Or is it milkweed? Chat, don't type it. <laughs> don't type it in chat. Why? <laughs> don't type the answer. Uh-oh, we got a fat misclick. Oh no, lots of misclicks. Oh no, I, I got you with the pickle weed, I'm sorry. I actually didn't mean to do that. I was just thinking of plants. The correct answer is milkweed. Who after this podcast wants to plant milkweed? Two hundred and eighty-nine people got that correct. Who's in the lead? Chuck, with all, <laughs> Chuck won that one with uh, all the energy he's getting from eating the butterflies. Kelpie is in the lead though. Oh, look at you guys go, dang. What other part, what other body part can monarchs taste with? That was not written very well. Is it that they can't taste? Can they taste with their wings? Can they taste with their eyes? Or can they taste with their toes? Kind of weird, HS, but that's okay. Um, the correct answer is their toes. Lots of you got that right, well done. Kind of weird, Raymaster. Who's in the lead? Contestant number 167, congratulations on getting that question correct. It means nothing. Total scores, Kelpie is still in the lead. Next question, two more. How many eggs do monarchs typically lay? Is it 600 to 1,000? Is it 50 to 100? Is it 200 to 400? Or is it 20 to 40 eggs? Four, three. Two, one. <laughs> Courtney and Danny had no problem with that question. <laughs> the correct answer is 200 to 400 eggs that are the size of a pin and they have little tiny ridges and we got to see them on a microscope today. Who got that one the fastest? Terp, congratulations, but Kelpie is still holding the lead. Oh my God. Kelpie, you're nuts. Last question, can he do it? Can he hold the lead? Squid is so good at these quizzes. Squid is also in second place. Chuck is in third. Is someone gonna pull ahead? Next question, last question. What percentage of eggs make it to adulthood? 
Is it about 7%? Is it about 3%? About 10% or about 1% of those 200 to 400 eggs make it to adulthood? Kind of weird, hater. The correct answer is about 3%. About 3% of those 200 to 400 eggs make it to adulthood, which is very people sad. But who is the winner of this quiz? Squid! K Squid pulled the lead, Kelpie! No! But Squid, congratulations, you've won the quiz. Probably again. I feel like you've won it before the two time. Yeah, this is the second time. Well done. Alright, Squid, you're a sub. Do you want to sub to another channel or you want another $5? Donate $5. Lot, could you add five dollars to the total? Well done, Squid. So fast. Amazing. Danny, how you doing? Are you are are we ready to go? I say that because YouTube video. Yes, I filmed a YouTube video where I tested my dog's intelligence. Yes. I did test to see which of my dogs was smarter. And I was, you'll see, watch the video. Um, it's up! Well done, Danny! All right, um, spam the shit, spam the heck, sorry, out of that link um, in chat. Click it, watch it, like it, I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, comment on the video, it's good for the algorithm, you guys know how this all works. Um, I added, but it's not changing. Okay, we'll add an extra $5 to this total, and that's what's going to the Butterfly Way project today. Thank you guys so much. It, it means a lot. Um, wait, this one. Oh. <laughs> okay, n click that link that Danny posted. <laughs> not the one from before. <laughs> okay. Um... Taha tipped three dollars before, um, said, what should we do when encountering wildlife near our homes? Is feeding birds or squirrels a yes or a no? Um, you can, you can put out bird feeders, and squirrels will probably get to those feeders, but don't hand feed wildlife ever. Um, that's, that's my, my general take. Okay, so, link the YouTube video, please go click it, please go watch it, I would really, really appreciate that. Um, Big thank you to my team, as always, for, for all the help. Um, I appreciate it. The graphic, wonderful. Will, Will with the website. You all know the website. Conservationcast.com now. Wonderful. Um, this podcast today was an inquiry from Conservationcast.com. So Will found the, the podcast through that website and, and emailed us through that. So that's really, really cool to have guests reach out to me that want to be on the podcast. That's starting to happen more now, which is really exciting. And a big part of it is because we have such a professional website and you guys are all here to watch and the numbers are something that people want to be a part of and, and they want, um, you know, the, the audience. And so you guys are to thank for that and for and for helping the podcast be so successful. So, again, even if you're not able to donate, um, you watching means a lot. So thank you for that. Uh, Locke, thank you for, for doing my all my overlays and stuff. Locke puts the name in the, in the overlay and he does these and he does my guest and org commands every week. And, um, Danny for making the YouTube video. I was really worried when I filmed it that it wouldn't be good, but Danny, um, made it, made it good. Uh, so well done. Thank you so much. Um, and then Tara's also on the team and Tara's Tara, you guys already know. So Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This weekend is going to be so fun. Um, Brendan is getting here tonight. So we're all going to go hang out. Uh, then sorty way and simply get here tomorrow. Um, so like I did last night with Slickstream, I'm going to do an announcement in discord whenever I'm on someone's stream and I'll probably put them on. I'll probably host them offline as well. So you guys will see me a lot this weekend. 
Um, Hachubby stream is supposed to be tomorrow morning, but I'm not sure what time it is. Uh, and... Oh, also big news that I could tell you on another stream, but I'll just tell you now. That red tail that came in with the broken wing, I get to release her. She's letting me do it. Um, my boss is letting me do it because I was such a big part in her recovery because um, I did x-rays on her every week. And I was there and I force feed fed her and I tube fed her and whatever. So she wants me to be a part of it. So I'm going to release her where my horse lives, I think. And we're doing that on Tuesday. So... Uh, that's my first big bird of prey release, and I'm really, really excited for that. Yeah, bean number two. Actually really cool. So, yeah, I'll, I'll try to get some pictures and stuff to show you guys. Uh, but she's doing really, really well. Um, so, yeah, good day. Thank you guys so much for, for being here. I appreciate it. I was informed that, uh, this, um, thing, <laughs> like, was off-center, for all of my podcasts and I just like didn't know but now it's like my cam is now fixed so good stuff um kind of a weird raid today um and maybe kind of confusing to you I did feel kind of weird going live today like normal and and doing my podcast uh, as if nothing's happening because we all know what's happening right now in the world we're all on social media we get what's going on um, Cash App is doing a charity stream where all the subs and all the bits are going. It's not sponsored. <laughs> I just saw that they were doing this today. All the subs and all the bits that they're, that they're getting today are going to the East Oak Collective, um, and to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I know that I didn't, that I don't talk about it that much on my stream because I don't feel like well-versed enough to talk about it, but I do know that it's important and I want to do good with it, especially with my platform. Um, so I know we didn't talk about it today because it was a podcast, but I am going to raid cash up. I, I hope you guys consider that any bits, any subs, any donations, um, are all going here and East Oakland is close to my heart because that's, I grew up around, uh, in, in the Bay. So, um, that's the raid today. That's the stream today. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate you so much. Um, and I'll see you a lot this weekend. So, but for me, my next stream is going to be on Monday. All right, I'll see you guys later. Peace.